Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Time Machine. I'm Harper, and today I'm making fan art of an angry man with a lantern jaw, a permanent frown, and a badge. That's right, everybody's favorite future cop, Judge Joseph Dredd. Now, step one for making this image was to draw it. Wait a minute, that's not true. Actually, the first step was to do some research recon to remind myself of JD's look and color scheme, and then start drawing it with a very fancy and expensive Ticonderoga number no. two pencil. Now, this consisted of redrawing the gun and hand twice, and speaking of redrawing stuff, I found a new drawing nemesis, the eagle shoulder pad. I redrew that stupid bird about 20 times and it still looks like a giant fart stain. And I know the shoulder pad is too far to the left, but I was trying to make the eagle head not land in the butt crack of the sketchbook. So eagle one, Harper zero. I wanted to use my super secret smeary wet charcoal style for the line work. So I cleaned up the drawing with a charcoal stick and then brushed over it with a wet, beat up $2 house painting brush. Usually this technique gives just the right amount of weathered grungy blur, but I overdid it this time and lost a lot of the paper white. Say lobby, say lobby. I first met JD back in 93. I know, cool rhyme, but it's got nothing to do with the story. It was at Fantasy Comics in Tucson, Arizona. I'd only been reading comics for a year or so, but I was already tired of the flash and flare of the foil embossed glow-in-the-dark scratch-and-sniff polybagged cover treats that the big publishers were pushing on the masses. I wandered around to the small black-and-white section in the back of the shop, and there he was, jammed into a sloppy pile of weird import books on top of a tall file cabinet. I brushed the dust off of one of the old magazines and found what I didn't know I was looking for. 2000 AD. Yeah, I know. I just got goosebumps too. And in the pile of books under that was a dread reprint collection of greatest hits or something. I don't know, it was a long time ago, but I can tell you this. It was chock full of no frills, black and white stories of a pissed off lawman. No gimmicks, just comics. Just what I needed. And now, a quick announcement from our sponsor. Hey, it's me again. I don't really have a sponsor. I just wanted to let you know that commissions are open. What? I know that sounds a little crazy because I've only done like five ever, but hey, that just makes them even more rare, right? <laughs> anyway, FYI, I'm available to help make your original art-owning dreams come true. For a small fee, of course. But put that credit card away because there's more. That's right, friends. Here's the bonus round. If you don't give a sweet squat about original art, but you still enjoy the Time Machine videos, I've got just the thing for you, and it rhymes with Patreon. It's true, I've got a Patreon page that I've been filling with comics, videos, sketchbook journal entries, and tons of art stuff that you might like. So please check out the link in the description below. Okay! Next for this image, I filled in the large areas with a flat watercolor wash. Then I laid in the face colors, starting with yellow so I could keep a highlight edge. The eye shield gets a light powder blue that looks kind of like plexiglass, and notice that as I go, I'm putting streaks of some of the colors in the background for unity and for a fun surprise later. I'm just layering all the colors to build them up slowly, because <laughs> I'm not that great of a painter. From here on, I use watercolor and acrylics and just sort of bounce around the image working on whichever part seems fun or cool to do next. Now here's something to remember. As a general rule of thumb, when using watercolors, you paint from light to dark, and with acrylics, you go from dark to light. Holy shit, that's an amazing tip! 
Next, I filled in some background shapes to see if I could start getting some value separation from the foreground character. And in a little bit, these shapes are going to magically turn into the monolithic skyscrapers of the Megapolis Madhouse, Mega City 1. And after that, I broke out the colored pencils to cut in some details and help cover up all my terrible mistakes. It kind of worked, but not really. Sad clown in the background. Sad clown in the background. Sad clown in the background. You know what I mean? That's like that Cypress Hill song, like Insane in the Membrane. Anybody? Do you remember Cypress Hill? Hello. The Wikipedia entry for Dredd starts off with some heavy truth, and I quote, Judge Joseph Dredd is a fictional character created by writer John Wagner and... Wait a second. <laughs> Hold on. Let's back up. You mean to tell me that Judge Dredd is fake? What? My whole life is a lie. Anyway, he was created by writer John Wagner and artist Carlos Esquera. His first appearance was in the second issue of the British weekly anthology comic, 2000 AD, in the year 1977. He's the magazine's longest running character. Judge Dredd is a law enforcement and judicial officer in the dystopian future city of Mega City One. Not to be confused with another badass hardline judge you may have heard of. Um, it's not an answer. <laughs> My wife is going to be so psyched I put that in the video. Number one JJ fan. He's a street judge, empowered to summarily arrest, convict, sentence, and execute criminals. In Great Britain, the character of Dredd and his name are sometimes invoked in discussions of police states, authoritarianism, and the rule of law. Hey, that reminds me. Dredd's catchphrase, I am the law, was the inspiration for a kick-ass song by the thrash metal band Anthrax in 1987. It's a real toe tapper, not as good as their song Caught in a Mosh, but still worth a listen. After this video, of course. Dredd's gun is called a Lawgiver. It's a pistol programmed to recognize only his palm print. Oh, you mean like a magic wand in the Harry Potter universe? And capable of firing six types of ammunition. He rides a Lawmaster motorcycle equipped with machine guns, a powerful laser cannon, and full artificial intelligence capable of responding to orders or operating itself. Aw oh, man, I should have drawn him on his badass motorcycle. Damn. Another missed opportunity. Now here's a really cool part on Wikipedia that I never thought of, but makes total sense. Dredd's helmet obscures his face except for his mouth and jaw. His entire face is never shown in the strip. This began as an unofficial guideline, but soon became a rule. As writer John Wagner explained, it sums up the facelessness of justice. Justice has no soul, so it isn't necessary for readers to see Dredd's face, and I don't want you to. And over the years, Judge Dredd has been hailed as one of the best satires of American and British culture. And semi-Wikipedia quote mixed in with my bullshit. And during that time, there's been so many rad artists on the title. Mike McMahon, Brendan McCarthy, Simon Bisley, Brian Boland, and on and on and on. And FYI, the fully painted dread book, Judgment on Gotham by Simon Bisley, is still one of my go-to comics for art inspiration. It's a Dread meets Batman meets Judge Death love story triangle. Drop the burrito, creep. I am the law. And here's another important note. The fantastic podcast video show Cartoonist Kayfabe has an awesome two-hour interview with Brendan McCarthy, one of the great Dread artists, talking all about 2000 AD and other cool art and life stories. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. For more hot sketchbook action, cool stories about art and life, and... 
dad jokes. Check out these rad videos right here. And if you thought this video was better than a microwave frozen burrito at 7-Eleven, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications by clicking the bell icon so you'll never miss another sketchbook video right here on the time machine. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Caught in a mosh.